Prima Media's Mining Weekly is speaking to Vuslat Bayaglu, the managing director of MENA. Vuslat, MENA is set to be well positioned for a diversified growth trajectory in line with global megatrends. Can you please elaborate on that? Martin, I, uh, I think there are three megatrends uh, currently in the world. Uh, uh, one of them is, uh, is the decarbonization. The, in other words, the energy transition from uh, fossil fuels to renewables. And, uh, and when, when we look at that, uh, it actually requires uh, a lot of steel because it's mainly wind and, uh, and solar energy investments. And uh, if you look at the, the projections regarding the uh, amount of uh, offshore and onshore wind investments and solar uh, uh, solar investments, it really needs huge amount of steel. And steel means and all uh, all all the ingredients that goes into steel, which are minerals, beads, uh, anthracite, coke, uh, chrome, manganese, iron ore, and nickel. So it actually uh, triggers a lot of uh, consumption of, uh, of minerals that's mined uh, uh, in different parts of the world. And then the second trend is the, all these stimulus packages uh, sponsored by governments uh, regarding infrastructure plans, which means uh, also cement, uh, steel, that, that would mean, again, minerals. Uh, that's the second mega trend. And the third mega trend is the electric vehicles, uh, in which uh, the battery technology needs lithium, cobalt, copper, nickel, uh, and uh, that means also minerals. So our actually uh, strategy is is linked with these mega trends. So we're looking at like um, what we should diversify to, what we should invest in, uh, so that we follow these mega trends and we supply uh, for the uh, for these trends. What's the outlook looking like within your company, taking into account the COVID-19 situation? COVID obviously affected our, our business, uh, especially with the hard lockdown started in end of March last year. Uh, we had to make a, a decision to stop two of our underground mines to make sure that people are safe and healthy. And um, But what we did is we, uh, we did uh, honor all of our legal obligations we paid people the retrenchment packages and we signed the recall agreements with the workers so that when we restart the operations, we bring them back. And um, we decided to, to restart our Zuland anthracite operation and we recalled our uh, workers and we, uh, we are ramping it up uh, nicely. Uh, obviously, we are very uh, cautious with uh, all the efforts that we need to take to protect the people. Uh, from being infected or from spreading the COVID. Um, and uh, at, we also stopped Kangra last year uh, with the same reason. And uh, we are planning to restart Kangra around end of February uh, by again taking all the, uh, all the precautions to make sure that people are safe uh, and healthy. But uh, it, it affected our business and we are now trying to bring them back. Have your COVID-19 strategies, those mitigation strategies, do you think they've worked to sustain your business well? We think it worked because last year when the, when the lockdown started uh, in, in many different parts of the world, the demand for our products uh, literally collapsed. When like, oil price went to minus $41 in the US, coal price went to $40 levels, and anthracite uh, demand actually uh, disappeared because uh, the industry stopped and the demand was really affected badly. Hence, uh, we had to stop. But now with, uh, with all, the, uh, all the vaccination efforts in different uh, countries in the world, plus the government-sponsored stimulus packages, it helps the, the industries to, to come back and to, to carry on with their production. Uh, and that triggers the demand for our products. And now it's the time uh, like uh, that's why we decided to start uh, to restart Zach because there's a demand uh, locally and there's a demand internationally, especially coming from South America and, and Asia uh, for, uh, for what we produce in Zulu and Anthracite. And the same applies for, uh, for coal, thermal coal. There's a, a big demand coming from China 
mainly due to the standoff between Australia and China trade relationships. Uh, but uh, there's a strong demand at the moment for, for all of our products. Hence, uh, uh, our, our strategy worked. And in, in between, we started uh, our manganese operation in, in October uh, last year, which, uh, which is also working quite well. We will have the first story around May. And uh, that's also a product that has got strong demand coming from the same reasons, like I mentioned about the mega trends in the world. And you've got quite a sizable portfolio of projects coming on stream. You had projected to spend more than seven billion in new investment until 2022. We are on target to complete our investments in, in South Africa. And uh, we, once we have our uh, regulatory approvals, we uh, start like uh, uh, developing the projects. Uh, one of them is a uh, the Vitacrans, which is going to be a thermal coal mine in Hendrina. We plan to invest 1.6 billion rand and we will mine about 300,000 tons per month uh, for a period of 22 years. And uh, we plan to start this mine uh, this year. We, like earlier, I mentioned about East Manganese, our first manganese operation in uh, Northern Cape. We will have the first or in May. Uh, we will produce 30,000 tons a month. And uh, we, uh, we will be investing, uh, once we have the uh, mine uh, up and running, about 250 million rand. And we've got Palmit Kalen, uh, uh, and we call it actually Bekezela Colliery, which is in Springs. We had uh, some hurdles in terms of like, getting our environmental authorization, but it is sorted now. We're waiting for the final approvals. And that's going to be a mine that will employ about uh, 800 people. And we will end up investing 1.5 billion rand, which will be uh, a, a low cost operation uh, that will hopefully supply coal to ESCOM at the, the competitive price, which uh, I, I, I guess ESCOM needs. And it will actually stop the complaints of shortage of coal. We are very nimble and uh, flexible investors, and we are hands on managers of the project. So uh, we, that, that helps us big time. And also, we are very prudent in allocation of the capital. That's also uh, our advantage. And uh, we also prefer to plow back the return on, uh, on, on our investments. Hence, uh, we don't really necessarily uh, rely on uh, finance from different financial institutions. So uh, this strategy actually has grown us from a single pit coal mine to an investor and operator of several collieries and processing plants across three minerals, thermal coal, anthracite, and, uh, and manganese in South Africa, and also a nickel cobalt asset in Turkey. So we want to maintain this uh, growth project, uh, growth uh, trajectory, and uh, our, our focus is to start uh, new operations in our existing uh, pipeline of uh, projects, and then uh, and for potential investments, we look at manganese, copper, chrome, uh, iron ore, uh, to take advantage of the global megatrends. Is there any big news coming up from MENA? Are you about to close any major deal at all? Uh, at the moment, there is nothing that I can announce, but we are working very hard. Uh, we are hoping that we will, uh, like, uh, we will do a, a major acquisition first quarter of this year. We will hopefully announce uh, maybe uh, end of March. We are working hard on these commodities to look at like uh, finding good assets uh, so that we can invest and develop. In what geography is that uh, acquisition likely to be? At the moment, it's uh, South African uh, based mainly. And uh, in, in my previous uh, interview with yourself, I told you about our gold uh, uh, exploration in Kyrgyzstan. And we carry on with that one. We drilled about 3,700 meters last year. And uh, we will drill uh, about 12,000 meters this year. And... Uh, our first results look, we might have a sizable deposit, uh, open cost, uh, good grade, and uh, we will keep on like investing in that country as well. Uh, but mainly what we are looking at in terms of iron ore, copper, and, uh, and chrome is, is, is in South Africa. And are you wanting to acquire operating mines or are you also prepared to get in on the exploration front? We are very much interested in the exploration front because... We believe that uh, to create value at the right price is the way to go with exploration. 
uh, it depends on uh, like if if he can find the right uh, like prospecting right holders or if he if he get uh, if he secure prospecting rights in the right places uh, that has got the potential to go and drill then we will definitely go and, and drill and we are happy to put risk capital on exploration and overall what uh, do you think you, you're likely to do this year that will take you forward uh, into the future is there anything that that could be transformatory for you i would like to uh, secure a, a a sizable manganese asset. It's uh, it's our priority at the moment, and uh, we are serious also in 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 an, in an iron ore acquisition. So um, I'm thinking that if we can do uh, one iron ore and one manganese asset acquisition, uh, that will be great for us. That was Crema Media's Mining Weekly speaking to Vuslat Bayaglu, the managing director of Menar.